Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici, welcome my friends. My name is Vincenzo and welcome to my channel, Fountain Pen Therapy. Well folks, thank you, thank you again for joining me. Um, I'm back with my weekly recap. Uh, as you, uh, some of you have been following my channel have noted in the last two weeks, I had interrupted the recap and replaced it with a two-part series where I discussed grail pens. I discussed a little bit my journey and, and then I, I provided some grail pen alternatives. I got to tell you, those, those videos were very popular. I received some very nice comments and likes and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much for the wonderful response. I know some of you, uh, you know, got a little bit purist um, or, or pure on a grail pen alternatives. I know there are a few purists who um, were not happy with the fact that I even discussed the, pro the, the subject. Look, I, you know, the, the objective there was, was to have some fun and, and as I say all the time, to have some fountain pen therapy. Obviously, grail pens are special and they may have some emotional attachment and you know if you're going to get into emotions and how grail pens represent for you something special and then try to replace them with uh, you know inexpensive chinese knockoffs as some of you've mentioned then you know that can raise that can raise some some anger there or some some doubts or uh, some very negative comments but you know apart from just a few of you um I think most of you understood what I was trying to do here. I was not trying to replace a grail pen. Um, I was just trying to have some fun to see what's out there, what's in my fountain pen collection that could even come close to any any grail pen experience. Obviously, you know, there's a far cry, there's a far distance between the two, and one cannot replace the other. And, you know, grail pens are special to, to each individual, and there's a lot of subjectivity there. So whatever whatever you may feel is a grail pen may have all kinds of um you know back backdoor explanations that uh, you know you need not share with anyone it, it, they're your emotions your attachments your your reasons but i hope that all of you understood that i was just trying to have some fun with that and it, it was just another way for me to exercise or execute my exit plan, as I called it, in my grill pen journey, which is to have some fun with the pens that I have before I start spending another thousand dollars on another so-called grail pen. Having said that, we're back with the weekly recap. I'm really excited. I've got some wonderful stuff for you today. So why don't we um, begin right away and let's look at some trends and some new pens. Well, Let's look at new pens first. Uh, look, I think uh, I've been away for the last two weeks or I've not looked at stuff for the last two weeks that I've shared with you. But of course, the big news is the Mont Blanc 100 anniversary collection pen. Uh, you know, there's no doubt that that pen uh, has, has, has been in the news. Um, in this regard, I, I think I refer you to three reviews that I think I enjoyed. First of all, congratulations to Hemingway Jones, my pal, who, you know, got the scoop. I think he's probably the first video, or first review of that pen. Managed to get his hands on on uh, on one of them, on the 149, and uh, you know, he, he made a wonderful, wonderful presentation. So, congrats, um, Hemingway. Uh, second, I also recommend Samuel Naldi's review. Uh, Mr. Naldi goes through. Uh, several because you know this 100 uh, anniversary is not only the 149 or other pens and he kind of looks at the old and the new and it's a g very nice video uh and uh it it it's it kind of nostalgic as well it looks as it looks at some you know old and vintage uh, versions etc and compares to the to the anniversary versions so i i recommend uh, that that video and and uh, my friend Shaq MD also looked at the 149 and um, I, I I suspect that he's going to go out and buy all the all of those anniversary pens and I promised to maybe meet up with him uh, at one of the fountain pen shows probably in Toronto and I'm going to I'm going to ask him to bring them all 
so that we can all try them. Um, that's going to be exciting. So there you have the Mont Blanc 100 anniversary. Am I going to buy one? Um, you know, as I mentioned, I'm in my exit plan right now. I don't intend to uh, purchase any grail pens, and I do consider this one to be a definite grail pen. Um, what's tempting me is the fact that there may be limited um, quantities, and by the time I decide to to uh, go ahead and purchase, there may not be any left, and then, of course, the prices are going to go up and all the rest of it. But I don't know. I, yeah, I think Canadian, they're going for anywhere between 1,003, 1,005, I think, that's the going prices. That's a lot of money for a pen. Uh, I think before I, 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 I jump, I'm going to, you know, enjoy my exit plan, as they say. So there you have it for Mont Blanc. The next thing, Kaweco is still in the news with that piston, uh, uh, with that piston sport, all sports. Um, uh, you know, there's been more and more reviews now, and I think some of the retailers has also finally got it in stock, so you can order it. The thing that I don't like about the Kaweco is it, 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 it's never been one of my favorites, although um, during one of my other videos, I, I promised that I would take out my uh, all-sport brass and just take a look at that pen once again and see how it, you know, kind of a rediscovery. And uh, I'll show you that in a minute, but... Uh, what I think I not, don't enjoy is that price tag, $175, anywhere between one seven, well, one sixty-five for the pen, and then there's a one seventy-five if you want the whole kit that comes with a an ink bottle. And some some retailers are selling at two hundred. I've seen it at two twenty-five. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's overly priced. So you know, I'm going to let all the hype subside, and we'll see. I doubt very much that these are going to be in limited quantities. That's at least my my view, uh, and if they are, they are. And if I miss out, I miss out. I I don't think that uh, for me it's a it's a major priority on my uh, pen hall list. But having said that, I do have to mention the fact that it is in the news. Also in the news is Lamy again, and Lamy has come out with two All Star Special Edition pens, the Aquatic and Fiery, as you see up on the screen. Do I like these pens? Generally speaking, um, yeah, why not? The colors are interesting. Uh, there's some differences with the that nib section. Uh, it's not black. It's not gray, transparent. They've gone with colors from I understand for which is not frequent for them. Uh, I guess if you like those colors, uh, they can be very interesting. But there you have it. I think it's important to speak uh, speak to those. Uh, the next pen I wanted to talk to you about is this uh, Sean uh, Design Faceted Pocket 6 Fountain Pen that I show up on the screen, the Bismuth Crystal. I think this pen is absolutely gorgeous. Now, there are two versions, one with a very special nib that's going for like six, $700, and then there's the other one, which is about $250, 260 uh, which is the one I think that's up on the screen now. Take a look at that. I mean... That's a titanium that's been azonized. Uh, wow, really nice. And I think everybody gets a different version because when you, I, what's the expression? When you kind of get those colors out of titanium nibs, um, you, you're not guaranteed the same look at the end of it. Um, but uh, I think that's a great pen. But there again, it's $260 for a small, uh, eventually a small pocket pen. So I'm thinking about it, but I'm not sure I'm there yet. But it's, and I don't own one of those shown uh, designs, so maybe this may be my first one and maybe I will consider it. Next on my list is the Visconti Mirage Mythos, the Poseidon. Um, and there you have it up on the screen. I'd like to congratulate Goulet Pens. Uh, they're selling that pen at $159, which is the same price as the other editions of this same pen. I've noticed that some retailers, and I will avoid pointing fingers, but others are kind of abusing or taking advantage of the fact that the Poseidon is a new edition, and they're going, they're charging a premium anywhere between 200 and 225 for that pen. I don't think that's that's fair. Uh, it, you know, essentially, it's the same pen as the others, and there are three or four other versions. So, congrats to the Goulet Pen, who's selling it, all of them at the same price. At about approximately 159, 
So kudos to them. What I did notice with Goulet pens, I don't know if they're listening. They probably are not. But I did write to them. As a Canadian, I, I actually placed an order on their site for two other products that we'll discuss in a minute. And I went into my cart and I punched out and I'm, you know, I'm already, uh, I signed in. I, I already have an account with them. But I, it had been a while since um, uh, last time I had purchased something from Goulet. Um, and um, when I went into the checkout and went through the process, gave, you know, my payment method, etc., it said that it doesn't deliver at my address. So I've got a feeling, I don't know if Google has changed something. I don't know if they've decided that they're not going to ship to Canada anymore. That would be extremely unfortunate. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions. I did write to Goulet uh, on, the, you know, on their contact page. I've left a message for them. I'm expecting them to get back to me. Maybe it's just my address or maybe there's something peculiar about what I, what, you know, the address that I've indicated that the system doesn't read. It's worked in the past, uh, so I don't know why it's not working now. But if, when I get some explanations, I will let you know. At least for us Canadians, uh, you know, I would hope that Goulet is not, uh, you know, turning um, turning uh, their heads towards us. I know that Birmingham, Birmingham Pens has done it. They don't deliver to Canada, or I think they don't deliver anywhere outside of the U.S., which, again, is most unfortunate. I bought a lot of inks from them. And uh, they decided to go that route. But uh, having said that, I will keep you guys, at least us Canadians, informed and we'll let you know. Um, then the other thing that I do want to discuss, and this is more, I guess, in the trend, um, is that I got um, one of the pens in my pen hall. Um, is this, um, and let me just uh, go up to my overhead camera, if you will. Um, here we go. Uh, let me just back off here. Is I ordered a um, an inexpensive Delta pen. By the way, I like this box. Very nice. Um, and, you know, it came with the regular stuff. And then I pulled out this pen. It's the Intesa. This pen cost me, I mean, it, it retails at 80, 84 dollar, 84 euros. Um, plus shipping, and it cost me 58 euros to get this thing to my house um, for a, approximately 138. And I don't know if Delta is going this route. I will review this pen, but I'm extremely disappointed. Um, and I'll explain to you in my detailed video. Uh, I mean, on the face of it, uh, and based on the pictures, I thought I was going to get something worthwhile for 140 euros um, I'm not sure it is the verdict's still out I have an ink to spend there's a couple of things that I don't like about it and maybe there's going to be some things that I do like about it that maybe that elastic nib is one of them we'll see but I hope this is not a trend for Delta I really do hope it's not I'm thinking about buying this pen and I'll put it up on 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 up on the screen and you know, I'm now hesitating, you know, because if it's anything like this in Teza, uh, then it may not be worth my time. But I think it's important that you viewers know that if you get tempted by this pen, in particular, the Intesa, that um, you know what you're getting yourself into. So stay tuned for my review uh, for that pen. Uh, and you know what? I might very well buy the other one that I've just shown you on screen. Uh, and uh, just so that my viewers can stay informed. Uh, and like I said, this is really one of my, you know, uh, babies, if you will. I mean, I really like Delta. It's, it's Neapolitan. It's Italian. I have some wonderful, wonderful pens. Um, and when I go to back to Naples maybe this summer I plan to visit their their uh, manufacturer or their 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 you know head office try to see if I can even get in and get an interview and maybe tape the whole thing and come back with it and show you what what I managed to 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 um, uh, you know get as a journalist <laughs> uh, 
Um, having said all of that, I just hope that this is not the new trend, because if it is, get out of it, Delta, right away. Don't do this to us. Really don't do this to us. Uh, so uh, Nino Marino, uh, wake up, sir. Anyway, that's my editorial comment for the day. Um, now, what else? For inks, new products in inks. Well, finally, put them up on the screen. I noticed that Endless Alchemy uh, is now being sold. Actually, they've arrived at Pen Chalet. I hope Pen Chalet understands that I've been waiting almost a month, a month and a half for these inks. Uh, the last time I wrote to them, they indicated that they're, they were just waiting for Endless to ship them. Uh, I just hope that uh, one of the first, I'm one of the first people that will be receiving these inks and that they don't ignore my, my shipment. In fact, I'm going to be writing to them, make sure they don't. But I'm looking forward to receiving these inks. Next on my list, I think that's important to, to note, and I'm showing you it's it's being sold at least on, at, on, on the Goulet pen site, is the Pelican Edelstein Golden Lapis. The, the special edition pen, a uh, special edition ink. I've been waiting for this ink for a while. I just like that color, blue with some of that gold shimmer. I think it's going to be very, very nice. It's been on back order and, uh, you know, or it's been on order on most sites. I noticed that Goulet uh, is selling it now, and that's one of the products I wanted to buy from Goulet. And then I got that bad surprise um, indicating that... Um, that they're uh, work on a ship to my address for some reason, which is just unfortunate. Um, the next one is the Robert Oster, uh, three new pens, uh, three new new inks, which I think are very very interesting. I'm putting them up on the screen there for you. So those of you who are fans of Robert Oster, I know I am. These are uh, three new inks that I think uh, deserve to be mentioned. Um, I, I think I'm going to stay away from the shimmering inks for a while. But they've got two standard inks thing that look interesting, so I may very well uh, decide to purchase. Next, well, what do we got for paper? Well, two things. First of all, putting up on the screen, Claire Fontaine has come up with this a totally recyclable or recycled paper Claire Fontaine notebook. Find that very interesting. Again, I've you've got the Goulet pen site there. Um, that was the other product that I was planning to purchase from them. And unfortunately, they indicate that they're not going to deliver at my address. Um, I also noticed that, so I ordered the Claire Fontaine notebook on, on um, Amazon. It's going to take a little while to get to me, from what I understand. And it's uh, maybe a little more expensive, but at least I know I can get it. I'd really like to try it based on the uh, Goulet um, this week's uh, kind of wrap up or you know what's new video uh, it looks like it is a fountain pen friendly paper uh, and made of made out of recycled paper and as you know I'm a I'm a great believer in uh, you know compiling and um, and and um, uh, providing you with details of new notebooks to come out I have two published guides where I review over a hundred notebooks, so it's one of my, one of my, uh, uh, you know, interests. So as soon as I get that notebook, and I'll be able to review it. The other one, of course, is the Onion Skin notebook that I mentioned that I had ordered. I know Emingway Jones had the owner of Onion Skin notebook on, um, on, uh, on his um, on his live show. Um, it comes in this nice bag. And here is the notebook. So I finally got my hands on one. Uh, and I will be giving a detailed review of this uh, of this notebook, uh, just to let you know. W the only thing that I want to mention at this stage is that I really thought that this paper was going to be, you know, that the page was going to be s much, much thinner than this. Uh, and so I was very surprised. But having said all of that, I'm looking forward to inking this notebook, providing you with my thoughts. So stay tuned. I think we're going to be uh, reviewing this sometime very, very soon. And uh, I'll give you my thoughts. Very nice. The Onion Skin Journal. Very, very nice. Congratulations. Little expensive for us Canadians uh, because of the shipping. But I'm hoping that it was worth 
uh, that the writing experience be be worth the price so that is the onion skin journal that's the paper so that kind of puts an end to some of the new products that i wanted to uh, mention one thing that i wanted to mention also is there's um, there's another trend that i noticed at least in some of the uh reviews uh, or the videos and um i may be one of the last ones to figure this out but um i noticed that a lot of a lot of reviewers were talking about you know the eight pen questions eight pen questions eight pen questions so i kind of did a little bit of research and i realized that there was a collaboration between lion lakes and simone uh, where they came up with these eight questions and so a lot of reviewers are taking the same eight questions and uh you know doing a review so providing uh, their own answers to the eight questions and i figured i might do the same let me know if you're interested i think the eight pin questions are the following i'm just reading out here on my ipad uh, when and how did you fountain pen journey begin interesting favorite inks in the beginning where are you go to what are your go-to inks now how have your ink and pen tastes changed over time are there inks and pens that you have yet to try but would like to uh, what is your holy grail pen uh, how many pens do you currently own do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection is it a number is it a feeling when did you know that you've reached your maximum and consequently what would you do if another pen ink came along those are the eight questions and i'm just wondering if you guys are interested in a review i'll probably do a a, a full review on that and answer that. I think there's some interesting questions there. I'm either going to do it all in one video or maybe, you know, tackle one question at a time during my recap as part of my editorial. But let me know what you guys feel. If you want me to do this eight pen question, let me know and I'll certainly oblige. I think it's a good idea and uh, um, it, it gives you, it gives a way to, to provide some of my own personal insight on things. Um, Next topic is going to be the YouTube reviews, a spotlight on what I consider some of the better reviews out there in the last week or so. Uh, well, I've already mentioned the three, Shaq MD, Hemingway Jones, and Samuel Naldi. All three have excellent videos uh, that deal with the new Mont Blanc uh, 149 100 anniversary collection pen. So the, that's those are three that I would rec definitely recommend. Then I have two videos from Doodlebud. The first one is an older video that uh, I wasn't able to comment on because, you know, it, it's been two weeks in a row that I've, uh, or yeah, skipped the recap. But I thought he did an excellent video on the Safari pen. I mean, it's only Doodlebud can do something like that. He went through the Safari pen and demonstrated how, technically speaking, this pen is almost perfect in terms of design uh he, he goes through it he you know he tears the, the pen all apart and and goes through all of the the parts and pieces and indicates how and why and only a technician like him only an engineer could have put together i thought it was just an excellent excellent video and you know what it contributed to maybe changing my mind you know that inexpensive pen could probably fit the description of a grail pen if once you'll take a look at this video from doodlebud i mean uh in terms of design uh you know german manufacturer congrats congrats uh i really appreciated that video so i thought i'd share that with you i also like the fact that uh, doodlebud likes uh, the Majon p136 generally speaking i think he was pretty positive about that pen i thought it was the only one i think it's a beautiful pen I know that Inquiring Minds ordered another version of the Madge on P136 and he was not very happy. But once again, I think I think he ordered, I mentioned this already, I think he ordered the wrong one. He may have a different view uh, based on this one that, that Doodlebud also reviews. But generally speaking, he had some positive things to say. So I'm glad we agree on that. I think it's an excellent pen. The only downside, of course, and for you purists out there, is that it is an inspired or a Mont Blanc inspired uh, model. So that may uh, piss off some people. Uh, but 
please don't send me videos about me trying to sell uh, you know Chinese knockoffs I, I'm not trying to sell anything I'm trying to inform you uh, I don't get any any commissions on the sale of any pen okay let's put that uh, I I don't even have uh, you know uh, sites that are you know that are associated with a commission uh, system where I'm gonna be paid back a a, a, a kickback if you will I you know there's none of that so I'm not trying to sell you any pen I'm trying to give you information and if you're a purist and you don't believe in purchasing and encouraging anybody who clones pens or uh, copies them uh, uh, then that's fine then you know what you see the video you don't like it just don't look at it just just don't view it and and, and I can understand that but don't accuse me of selling Chinese knockoffs or any knockoffs for that matter it's not it's not my goal okay um, having said that <laughs> I like to refer you to Gary Green I just discovered this uh, this gentleman uh, I think he's a lawyer like I am it, it, it appears that he has a, just a beautiful pen collection and I just like the personality I like this uh, this man the way he presents things uh, and uh, congrats uh, I'm gonna uh, give him a shout out and you know let him know that I mentioned that he's been mentioned on my channel and, and he does a great video about the um, this pen uh, let me just cut down here and we'll get to that in a second or maybe I can get down right away and we'll do that right away yes this uh, this clone this uh, you know no name JD big metal pen that is meant to um, clone the pilot Yurushi who that was remember that this was on my list of pens uh, that I was that I did purchase and that I was obliged to cancel because they didn't have my nib you remember that and I stopped then uh, I stopped there and then with my grail pen uh, purchases uh, and I invite you to take a look at my uh, grail pen uh, journey video but having said that what he does is that he compares this one to the real thing because he does have the real thing um, and but what I found interesting is that he goes through a nib swap where he manages to put a Jinao uh, number eight size nib in this clone if you will and he explains how he did it um, I've done the same thing and the verdict's still out so I'm not going to do a writing sample or anything more than just to show it to you uh, I got two issues here one I was obliged to eye drop this pen because I couldn't get with the modification that I did and I'll get into the details uh, if it works maybe on the next video uh, so I wasn't able to uh, put in a, a, a converter but he managed to modify it he suggested this take a look at this vi his video he's got actually two ways to do it he's got two videos on it um and if you're interested take a look at him i think i think he's a very nice I, I, expressive man and and the way he presents things and it looks like he's a real buff and you know he's a real collector so stay tuned for my next recap i'll let you know how it all works out i want to see if this thing leaks or if it doesn't and how how well uh, and you can only do this because this thing you know goes anywhere between 10 15 20 25 bucks i wouldn't have done this in in in, in a pen that was expensive but you know if you're gonna use a clone well at least let's use them to experiment and um maybe i was maybe his his trick works we'll see if it worked for me so stay tuned for that so that's gary green okay so what do we got here oh okay so next chapter um what i call fountain pen spotlight or spotlight on my own collection and my own uh, what i've been doing in the next last couple of weeks and what i will be doing in the next couple of weeks first of all i just want to mention to you folks that uh, i believe things are almost set for me to appear on Emingway jones live show uh, he's invited me we've exchanged some emails um, I know he mentioned that I wasn't getting back to him it, it was inadvertent I have two email addresses one is fountainpentherapy at gmail.com 
as as you know it's in my description and unfortunately i i don't have the habit of looking at that email address as often as i should and um, he did send me a couple of video a couple of emails that went and I, you know with no replies and and i apologize for that uh, but then i gave him another email address that i you know that i look at almost on a daily basis so we finally managed to connect it looks like it's going to be april 23rd where we're working things out so when things get confirmed when he confirms that i will be on i will be able to confirm it to you folks so stay tuned for that i'm really really looking forward to sharing my thoughts with hemingway I noticed that more and more we have things, I wouldn't say things in common, I think is unique, but there are certain interests and certain passions that we have um, and, and, and and views on things um, that, that are kind of similar um, and yet different. And so I, I'm really looking forward to having a chat. I don't know what he's going to want to talk about, but I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to wing it and uh, we'll be able to provide some entertaining comments during that show so there you have it now what what's in my order list well here are there's four pens that i've put uh, that i've ordered uh, the first one is this ongdian 8041 just ongdian hasn't come up with anything other than their anniversary uh, or their year uh you know uh, dragon pen i'm uh, wondering why and what happened but i noticed that this ongdian 8041 really interests me it's a nice pen and I, I realized that I didn't have it in my collection, so I've, I've ordered that from Etsy. We'll be expecting a receipt sometime soon. I've or, I also ordered this Lemon M2S. Originally, this thing was going for really expensive. They wanted like $60, $70, $80 for it, and I thought it wasn't worthwhile. But I noticed the price has gone down. Uh, it's now, the price is indicated uh, up on the screen. It's more reasonable, so I've... I'd like to see what it's all about. Uh, so I've ordered this Lemon M2S. But I also was curious about this next pen. It's described as the Hero Vintage. I have one Hero pen, which was very nice. I understand that Hero does make some wonderful pens. Um, and I don't know, this one for some reason kind of um, really caught my eye uh, because of its simplicity, but in but it's classy looking. I did not order it in the few day nib, just the standard uh, fine nib, I believe. So Hero Vintage pen, I've ordered it and it's uh, uh, expecting that from Etsy as well. And um, I've also ordered this Majon T5, which I did not have in my collection. I thought I did, but I don't. So um, I've ordered it and all of these pens, if I deem them um, um, worthy, will be reviewed by me obviously uh en temps et lieu as they say uh, so uh, there you have my recent orders now what do we got for my uh pen hauls for this week let me go to my overhead camera first of all i'm happy to say that i finally received this is a pen that i've been looking at for many many weeks and looking for when it was on sale um, and I finally got it. There's a little bit of a story. It's, it's not quite what I wanted, but uh, at least I have the pen now. And it's this uh, Joya uh, Capo di Monte Van Gogh pen. Uh, it will be reviewed in detail um, sometime soon. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy that it now uh, finally uh, forms part of my collection. A little bit of a story. I... I had ordered the the rose gold. This is uh, they call it, I think, rhodium or, or um, uh, finish with the silver nib um, or silver colored nib or steel colored nib, if you will. Uh, I had ordered in rose gold and I didn't get it, uh, so I complained to uh, Italian pens. They wrote back, they apologized. Uh, and uh, said to us, okay, well, you can, you know, send back to us. I said, do you have the rose gold? And apparently they don't have the rose gold anymore. They're out of stock. Uh, but he said, look, if you keep the pen, I will provide you with a 30% discount to avoid all the hassle and for the apology. So it was a nice touch of Italian pens. So in the end, this pen ended up costing me 30% cheaper. Um, so I'm very, very happy that it finally forms part of my collection. I haven't inked it up. I haven't looked at it carefully yet, 
that will be part of my review and it's going to form part of my Italian pen reviews that I do quite often uh, so stay tuned for that so great finally got that pen what else have I got for you well in terms of the pen all I received this pen from um, Lotus uh, and uh, I will be reviewing it sometime soon very nice very nice very nicely manufactured ebonite pen uh, and um, with a nice nib I will be taking a look at this pen sometime soon so there you have it another Lotus pen it's now I've had now I have two three uh, three pens this is my fourth one in my collection I think it's a it's a very very nice uh, Indian pen manufacturer that needs to be mentioned so there you have it Lotus another pen in my pen all what else have I got for you uh, oh yes okay talk about clones um, I finally I was very curious about this lemon pen and I don't know if you folks have seen this um, this is what they call the lemon what is it a lemon m5 panda uh, panda because it's got a kind of a panda up there and panda on this this gold um. now i'm going to let you guess um, whether or not this resembles any other pen that you may have seen um, in 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 your uh, in your days um, uh, stay tuned i'm going to be reviewing this pen probably go up next week we'll see if i can get a review done but i think this pen is very very interesting it's got a choice of lemon nibs I've, I took this one with I ordered it with a blade uh, lemon medium nib looking forward to reviewing it so far um, I gotta tell you I'm really really enthusiastic about this pen really nice but I will give you a more in-depth look uh, in my review so stay tuned for the lemon m5 it came in this uh, by the way this leather pouch there you have it so those are my pen alls for this week very interesting you'll be getting the detailed reviews uh, all sometime soon what else have i got oh yes what i wanted to mention was shack md and i'll put it up on my um, put it up on my on top here shack md had at a um at a video where he proposed a nib swab uh, swap between his Asvine 200. By the way, I think he loves his Asvine 200. He's been putting up videos uh, varying in shorts with his new Asvine V200. I think he absolutely loves that pen. Uh, having said that, what he does is he swaps the nib, I think it was a Bach nib, with a Sailor nib. And then he calls it, you know, the Super Pen or something like that. So that's something interesting. If you guys have that Sailor nib, you may want to consider swapping it into the Asvine V200 and uh, you'll have a very nice writer from what I understand from a Shack MD. So that got me going about, you know, possible, uh, possible uh, nib swabs or swaps. And I already mentioned this, um, this, um, the swap here and this, the verdict's still out. So we'll see what that gives. But I do, I did want to mention to you another one. And it's the following. First of all, let me go to my overhead camera. First thing to mention is that number eight size nibs are, you know, at least from the major, uh, more well-known brands are very expensive. Okay. Bach makes a number eight size nib. This is, this is one of them. This is a titanium 380 they call it but it's a it's essentially a size 8 that I had purchased with this pen from Ranga this beautiful splendor uh, you have the choice of putting in a number 8 size nib and you either uh, you had the choice of this Bach titanium it cost me a fortune uh, this Bach titanium nib runs at uh, found, uh, what do they call it FP nibs and this runs at um uh what is it uh, 189 dollars canadian okay so if you buy a a pen at about a hundred dollars this this cost you 189 dollars so i was thinking well can i take any other 
you know, any other number eight size nib and, and use Ranga, uh, a Ranga nib, a Ranga pen. Um, what I discovered is that at least not until recently, I don't believe the Bach made number eight size steel nibs. As he, I'll put it up on the screen, FP Nibs now is telling us that there is going to be one uh, number eight sized steel Bach nib that's going to go for $75, as you can see up on the screen, and it will be available in June. So it looks like finally, because I was never able to find a steel number eight sized Bach nib, it looks like it's going to be available. I know that Magna Carta number eight size nibs are used by a certain, and now I forget if there's more than one, but certainly Ranga is using them now. Uh, I'll put up on the screen an indication of the two pens. Again, it's a Splendor. You can buy it either in this more um, uh, expensive uh, uh, ebonite. Um, it's a premium ebonite at uh, 160. It goes for $160 with a Magna uh, Magna Carta uh, number eight size nib. Or you can take a look at this other alternative ebonite, which is a lower quality ebonite. Frankly, I can't tell the difference, but it appears to be $20 cheaper. It's at $140 with the Magna Carta nib. But you can buy both pens either for $90 or $110, depending on the ebonite you choose, without any nibs, but with a setting. In other words, the pen is made to receive a Bach number eight sized unit. Um, so I said to myself, interesting, this Splendor came with a number eight sized unit, if you will, to accommodate number eight sized Bach nib. And I said, can I replace this Bach nib? That's what, what I say, 190 bucks with a Jinao number eight size nib. The Jinao nibs cost, the X159s anyway, cost 12 bucks for three. So they're like $4 each. And they're a beautiful writer, okay? Especially the medium nib, I think. In my case, I really enjoy the, the medium nib. I'm not talking about the 9019. I mean, it's a similar nib, but it has a different um, nib unit, if you will. Uh, I'm talking about the X159. So I said to myself, can I use that X159 in this Ranga pen? Lo and behold, you can, folks. Now, I tried putting in here the number the Jinao number eight 9019 the 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 unit is bigger it's it's got it's got the 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 screw in mechanism or the screw in um uh, slots a little bit higher up won't fit in this pen but the 159 x 159 number eight does so far so good it hasn't leaked on me, I don't think. Um, and I did use it with a converter. The converter kind of had to slip in. I had to push it in, but it does work, okay? And if this works, I'm going to order a bunch of Ranga Ebonite pens <laughs> uh, at $90 and put in these four buck number eight size nibs because with these big Ranga pens, you need a big size nib. Now, what does it look like? Well, here it is. Let me give you a writing sample, just so that you could appreciate. Now, hopefully this will work. Um, this is my experimental notebook. Um, let's just see what this gives. So this is the Okay, it had been open for a while, so that's uh, to be expected. But this is the Ranga Splendor. And the nib is the Jinhao 
Number eight. X-159 unit. And this is, is this a medium? Yeah, this is a medium. So far, so good, folks. It doesn't leak. Um, it looks like that converter, I w managed to insert it. It works really, really nice. Um, so if anybody, of, you know, you would like to have a different pen, uh, well, certainly this Ranga can accommodate it. Now, uh, yes, the Magna Carta nib is not as expensive as the titanium nib that comes with this sold on, by the way, it's sold on Peyton Street uh, pens, just to mention that. And, and the Magna Carta, I think, ends up costing approximately... Uh, uh, for the $90 pen, approximately 50 bucks. I can give you a $50 discount if you order it without without a nib. So I invite you to take a look at that. You talk talk about my exit plan, which is to enjoy what I have. Well, one part of that is going to be to kind of look into all kinds of experiments to swap nibs and maybe put inexpensive uh, pens on great nibs or vice versa, put inexpensive nibs on uh, better better looking pens or better feeling pens than just the gin house uh, although i got to tell you the x159 and the 9019 are nice pens but if if you want you know write with an ebonite pen or this resin pen uh well there you have it at um ranga uh, can certainly provide uh, the pen for you and then you can experiment with the uh, gin out nib and um there you go. There you go. My question is, my suspicion is that this clone was made by Jin Ao. They just probably were too embarrassed to put their names on it. I don't know. But my question is, why didn't they make this pen uh, with a Jin Ao number eight sized? It would have been, a, a, I, I'm telling you, if they come out with that, uh, uh, purists, close your ears, uh, shut off uh, this channel, if you will. I know the purists will go crazy, but let me tell you, it's going to sell. It's going to sell like you wouldn't believe because, I mean, like it or not, it's still a heavy but nice bet. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, Jinao number eight. Nice experiment. If you guys are interested, um, take a look at that and uh, you'll see your options. I'll put all, all the all the all the connect uh, all the um, the sites that you need to consult in order to to, to look at those experiments um uh you know on my uh, on the in the description so you'll have all the information there for you to to experiment with that okay so what else we got here okay we're just going to move now to my kind of editorial okay two things You'll remember, for those of you who, meant, who, who watched my Grail Pen uh, journey video, uh, part one, you'll see that I mentioned that part of my exit plan was to stop buying Grail Pens, or so-called uh, Grail Pens, and kind of enjoy the, the, the 300, 400 pens that I do have in my collection. And as you can imagine, when you have so many pens, you're not using them all every week. And you're bound to ignore or you know quite a few of them and so what i plan to do in my weekly recap every week i'm going to bring back and resurrect three pens that i haven't used in months or years just to kind of show you where we're at and so for this recap i've chosen three so give me a second we'll go to my overhead camera and i'll show you the three that i've resurrected for this week okay so we're back the first pen that I've resurrected from <laughs> from the dead, so to speak, and it's a pity, you know. Uh, when I started my fountain pen collection and I decided that I was going to, you know, buy more than one, one of the first um, pen manufacturers that I bought from was Franklin, no, what they called? Franklin Christoph. That, there's their logo on this pen. This is the Model 19 which is one of their more popular models and one of their bigger models, if you will, comes in this beautiful black, uh, black resin. And 
they also make some interesting nibs with different grinds, if you will. And uh, amongst the various grinds, you know, the regular standard grinds that you see for everyday use, and I figured I'd show you this pen with that particular special grind or a special nib, is this beautiful, I don't know if the camera picks it up. Here we go. It's a, kind of a 1.9 stub, and it has two tines. See that? As opposed to having just one slit. It's got two of them, <laughs> if you will. And let me tell you, this, this nib is so juicy. I don't know if this is going to write. I haven't written with it since uh, it's a couple of days since I took it out. But So this is the Franklin... Kristoff uh, model nineteen, and this nib is a an FC. Probably, I think it's a one point nine stub. But if you're all, if you're looking to, for example, do some, you know, ink swatching. Uh, and, and want to be able to get a thicker, a very thick line to show the the characteristics of the ink. Let me tell you, this thing is just absolutely. And look at the line variation you get. Uh, I mean, uh, it's <laughs> it's really really fun. So that's a pen I think that I'm going to be using for my ink swatching from now on. That I had, you know, probably more than a year. Oh. Oh, more than two years I had pulled this thing out. Um, so there you have it. The Franklin Kristoff Model 19 with an 1.9 nib. Very nice pen, by the way. So when I'm fed up of using this nib, and probably sometime soon because I, you know, I can't see myself writing, I, I'm going to resurrect this pen. It's going to form, it's going to go back into my uh, weekly, uh, weekly run, if you will, because it's just a gorgeous pen. I love the resin. A really warm, very nice feel, very nice thickness and section. Well done. Very nice pen. Well manufactured. Franklin Kristoff. There you have it. Second thing is that I, I've been very, you know, very negative on Kaweco pens. Um, and I, you know, I did own this All Sport Brass. I think that's what they call it. Or Brass Sport Pen. Um... And and I said to myself, you know what? Let me, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me take it out again. And is this a pen that I would enjoy? And um, first of all, to my great surprise, I think the last time I I had played with it was for my video. I did a video on, uh, you know, best of pocket pen review or something like that. Uh, but you know, I had briefly reviewed it then, but I had not really done a, I don't think, a, a comprehensive um, writing sample with it. And I hadn't written with this for a while. And to my great satisfaction, so sorry, Kaweco, um, this pen really, really is a nice writer. Um, I mean, first of all, it's got this um, stub, it's a number five, so this is the Brass Sport or Sport Brass with a number five stub. Wow, folks. Really, 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 really nice. i got to tell you, um, yeah, I was really surprised um, how well this pen feels. Um, it's been inked for more than a week and I just picked it up now and look at the way it writes. Very, very nice. So it doesn't dry up on you. It's, you know, the brass is heavy, but it sits there in your hands really nicely. Um, and yeah, I can see why people say that these Kawekos are probably, you know, they're meant obviously to be you can write without them, but they're meant to be posted, and it posts so wonderfully, and it creates this gorgeous pen to the point where 
it got me to think about ordering the piston, the new piston pen. I'm, I'm not quite there yet because I think at 175 or two, you know, $200 American, um, I think it's overpriced. But this one might find its way back into my uh, weekly run, as they say. So Kaweco, rediscovery. It's like me just ordering yet yesterday. There you have it. That's the second pen. Third pen is this Caras Vertex, with this beautiful resin. Um, I hadn't used this pen in a long, long time, maybe even three years. Um, with this beautiful stub nib, uh, also very nicely branded uh, with the Caras branding there. It's a 1.1 stub. I forget, but I think these things are probably Bach nibs, if I'm not mistaken. From the way this this stub writes, I think it is a it is a Bach uh, nib that's been nicely branded uh, with this lining on it. Part of it is matte, and part of it is shine. Uh, very nice. So this Caras, sorry about that. Here we go. But that's the Bach stubs. Hey, they're never perfect. Caras Vertex with a 1.1 stub. Um, the nib is a probably a a Bach. But what it got me to realize is a nice little pen. Very nice. It also posts very nicely creates this very nice feel uh, it gives you a very good writing experience um, very nice and again a pen that i hadn't used in more than three years i think uh, without exaggeration uh, i think i had inked it washed it put it away so there you have my three new discoveries for the week uh, and folks i gotta tell you it's a lot of fun it's like me buying these pens for the first time and and enjoying them part of the exit plan folks part of the exit plan so there you have it we'll do we'll do three like this every week until i review uh, most of the pens that i haven't seen and it gets me a chance to to review them but it gives me a chance to use them if you will um the last item on my list is a little bit of a just an anecdote it's just a fun thing that i wanted to share with you I don't know if you guys have been watching, have watched, or intend to watch, and if, if you're even subscribed, because some of you may not be, um, to Netflix. Netflix has this new um, new episode or new series by the name of Ripley. It's an eight-part episode limited series. It's essentially a remake of Mr. Ripley, an old film that starred, uh, what was it, Matt Damon and um, Jude Law, I believe. Uh, and 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 the the plot it, it's a psychological uh, thriller where you have a con artist essentially who uh, assumes the identity of a very wealthy man uh, and I'll I'll leave it at that I don't want to spoil anything but what I found interesting about and you know what I was watching Hemingway Jones's live episode this week on Tuesday and I had already finished watching Ripley so I was it was in my plans it was already in my notes to do this what I'm doing now to do this and wouldn't you know it Hemingway Jones mentions the same thing and I said and I wrote to him you just scooped me out you know so I don't know if you guys caught it because it was kind of a in passing message and I I want to I want to deal with it a little more in depth but in this Ripley series one of the main stars, in my opinion, in this, in this series, is a Mont Blanc 149. I think the Mont Blanc 149 is probably, you know, the supporting actor, if you will, in this, in this, uh, in this series. I don't know if it's the same thing in the, in, the, in the film. I remember, I'm sure I've watched the film some time ago, but uh, I have not watched it recently or reviewed it recently. And what I find, what, what's interesting is that the Mont Blanc 149 takes up a very important part or a space in this, 
in this episode. Let me just put up for you the first thing. This is a picture of one of the one of the scenes where the con artist meets the wealthy man and he's in his apartment or is in, in his condo uh, unit in, in a beautiful uh, place near on the Amalfi Coast, by the way. It all takes place in Italy. So, um, And, um, you know, he's going to con this wealthy man, right? And while the wealthy man, I think, is in another room, he notices the Mont Blanc 149 sitting on the desk uh, of the wealthy man. And he looks at it and he picks it up. And this is what this picture is about. What happens, of course, is he steals the pen. <laughs> and we'll see how the pen is used uh, in a second. He eventually returns it, by the way. He does return it because I guess he doesn't want the 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 wealthy man to realize it's missing. But the Mont Blanc is there. You see it. And, and that's where I think that's the first time we see it. It's difficult. It's all black and white, the film. So it's difficult to say whether... It, you see gold trimmings or silver or or some other type of trimmings on on, on the 149 that we see in the film or in the in the series but um, there you have it I, i'll show up on the screen a second time this pen gets used very often when there's a checking in in an hotel um, uh, what happens is that you know when you check in at least in the old days they would have you sign uh, and, and and the film does take place sometime in the past okay um you you know the, you and maybe in some of the hotels today you they have you sign their you know their guest register if you will and they always offer you you know the the uh, the concierge offers you one of their cheap pens to, to sign your name but it's either the wealthy man in this particular picture or later on as we see mr ripley the con artist he pulls out the pen from his breast pocket and opens it up and you can hear the noise and and you know and it becomes a symbol of wealth it be, so when the concierge sees the man pulling out this 149 he automatically assumes that this man is a wealthy man this man is a man of means uh, an important per personality and in certain instances they you know they say oh nice pen and that's what I've got up on the screen. You see the translation because he says it in Italian, bella pen, you know, and he says nice pen. And so you see the card artist uses this pen constantly to put forth this facade of being the wealthy uh, personality, if you will. Then episode number four is entitled Dolce Vita. So that's the second fountain pen reference that I found in this episode, which is interesting. And you see up on the screen, the the title of of the episode i think it's episode four yeah it's episode four and then you also see and i'll put it up on the screen now at one point he is typing into his typewriter because he's he's going to be writing letters with his typewriter and he wanted to make sure that the typing um, letters had this particularity about it that could be identified to the wealthy man whose identity he is he has taken assumed and 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 look at the look at the phrase he's, he's, he's typing you know it's the, the, the you know the phrase that we often use in our writing samples you know the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and we all know that this this phrase has every letter of the alphabet and etc 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 so i thought that you know another you know uh, if you will another reference to our hobby uh, which was very interesting. So take a look at that. By the way, take a look at that that that, that series. Just fascinating. Really, really, really. I think it's a very good series. Probably even better than the uh, than the original movie in my in my view. And it lasts eight episodes, and it features the Mont Blanc 149. <laughs> so you know, Hemingway Jones likes to speak about um, pens in in film. Uh, and I know he's working on a second and maybe even a third episode. We, I would not be surprised if Ripley will will make that uh, that list sometime soon since he's he's already mentioned it. So there you have that. So that was my last item for discussions for today. Um, that's it for me, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, weekly recap. Uh, hope you have had some fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying your pens. Please subscribe. Um, I know my I finally hit the 3,000 subscriber mark and it's going really nicely. 
Um, but I noticed that uh, you know when you get four or five thousand views on your on your videos, it means and you only have three thousand subscribers. It means there's like a thousand plus that are watching but are not subscribing. Click that button, please subscribe. It will help uh, help things along, and I would uh, uh, greatly appreciate it. So grazie molto a tutti. Thank you very very much. Enjoy your week and stay tuned for my videos, folks. Is a a lot coming up. Thank you.